Today we're going to take a look at a really interesting lens. I had this lens in my camera bag for many years. I bought this lens new around mid to early 2000. And recently I got it back out again and used it on a couple of assignments. And it's the Pilang 8mm fisheye lens. This is a lens that's made in the former Soviet Republic of Belarus. And if you look at the image on the full frame sensory camera, it's a circular fisheye. And when using this lens on an APS-C crop sensory camera, such as my Nikon D7200, which you're going to see some of the images shortly, you can see that there's a circular dark corners. And if you want, you can crop those out. So the good news about this lens is it's relatively inexpensive. It's also very well made. It's all metal and glass. Of course, there's no plastic parts on this lens. And it's also reasonably sharp. I say reasonably because, I mean, it's not like your top of the line Nikon glass or Canon glass. But you're going to see uh, surprisingly sharp for what you're paying for this lens. I just looked uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and they're going on eBay for about $150 on up. You can get them used, or I think some people still are selling these uh, lenses brand new. Great lens for the money. And the not so good news is that this lens has no electronics. So you're going to have to focus manually, and you can only shoot in manual or aperture priority. Not a big deal, really. And when you focus with this lens, you have so much depth to feel because this is such a short focal length lens. You're going to see on your lens barrel, which we're going to take a look at shortly, the huge amount of depth of field that you have with this lens. I usually shoot manual with this lens because there's never any surprises. Uh, you can also shoot, of course, aperture priority. However, I really suggest anybody out there that's really serious about learning photography is to learn to shoot manual. Once you do that, you're going to have a whole lot more control over your photography. And once you get that control over your images, guess what? You can create beautiful images repeatedly because you know what you're doing, you know what to look for, and you can adjust your settings so you get the perfect exposure all the time. And along with my lens came a set of three filters. There's a UV, a green, and like an orange filter that you can use, and they actually fit behind the lens. So if you're shopping for this lens, you might want to make sure that these filters are included. Now there is a manual that comes with this lens, and I put a link on the bottom of this video that you can click on if you want to get to the manual. However, I was looking it over, and it seems sort of like it's lost in translation. So I'm going to go through some of the settings and I'm going to show you how you can use this lens before we go further into looking at some of the other photographs that we're taking with this lens and my Nikon D7200. Alright, so let's take a look at using this lens. Now, as I mentioned, you have to shoot either manual mode or in aperture priority. And I usually prefer manual mode. So this way you can set your lens to give you the exact exposure that you need. So let's start with setting your aperture. On the first ring here, you could see that it goes from f16 and full open is 3.5. So a pretty fast lens actually. And let's just pick a good round number, f8. So we're going to be shooting at f8. And then next thing that you want to do is focus. And on the bottom here is your focusing. And let me bring it up here. It's, you could see it focuses from infinity to about, I believe it's 0.22 meters. So you want to, you can either estimate where your focus is, but if you look on top here, right on top of this focusing scale here, there's another ring that has a depth of field chart on here. And let's just move the infinity focusing symbol to F8. 
because we're set at F8. So we're on F8 here, and F8 is going to give us in focus from infinity all the way to a little bit less than 0.3 meters. So that's how that works. So you have a lot of room for, for focus error here. So because of this uh, small focal length lens, you have so much depth of field. So that's pretty much it on focusing. So once you have your aperture set and you're in focus, you're going to see another ring here that says unlock and lock. So what this means is that when you turn it all the way to the right, it's going to lock in. It's going to give you the actual aperture that you have this set for. And if you unlock it, it's going to open it up, all the way open up to uh, full aperture 3.5. So in other words, this may be helpful if you're in a dark room and it's a little bit hard to see. You might want to just put this into the unlock position. And this way you can look at your image as you're composing it wide open so your viewfinder is brighter. And when you're ready, you're just going to lock it in and it's going to close it down to whatever your aperture is set at. And then you make your exposure. That simple. A fun little lens at a great price. Going to give you some great images. So as we take a look at the images here, and this is one that's straight out of the camera. And then, of course, you can see the dark circular shapes on the edges here. And if we crop that in a little bit, we get rid of that. And we still have that wide angle, that neat dramatic look to it. And this lens is especially good for doing things like landscape photography. It's also great for architectural photography where it just adds so much impact to the buildings and to the surrounding sky that you have here. It's great for that, I think. Now, one thing that you do have to be careful of is lens flare, because this lens is so wide, I believe it covers about 180 degrees. So even if, you're, if you have your hand a little bit off to the side, it's going to be in the photo. And if you have a flash on your camera and it leans too far forward, guess what? You're going to be picking up that flash also. So you do have to be careful of lens flare here. And it's either going to be on the top like you see here. And then it may also be on the uh, bottom. Here the sun was coming in at a lower angle and it just hit a little bit on the bottom. So you can crop that out if you want. Same thing here, a little bit of a lens flare on the bottom. Crop it a little closer and it's gone. Just something to be aware of. So here I just got done watching these performers. And before they left, I just asked them if I can just do a quick portrait of the three of them. So I had this lens on and I didn't want to waste any of their time. So I just used this lens in doing their portrait. And then you can see it's very, very wide. Could have been cropped more. And if you look at the image, as we crop it a little bit closer, you can see that it still shows some of the buildings, some of the neat architecture around them. And if you want to crop in even closer, it almost has that look that it was taken with a telephoto lens, except, of course, for the blurred background. But here, by cropping it close, notice how you're really not getting that wide effect anymore, because now you're just using a small part of that lens. But I wanted to show you this because considering how much I cropped this in, it is very, very sharp. So overall, this is a great lens to use if you're going to be doing an unusual job and maybe you want to add some variety to your job, whether it's a uh, portrait assignment, a wedding, or you're doing some commercial shoots. This may be just a cherry on top. Of course, you don't want to overdo it, but just give in a little bit extra, and I think it's going to add a little bit of impact and some interest to your photo shoot.